Okay. You know, because yeah. you are making future plans. I saw you've done quite a few interviews about the birthday for a black book, a blackbird yeah. birthday, and you're making future plans. I am. What? How? The Under this very impossible, impossible. The audacity. I think you know what. I can make future plans because, thankfully, I I was in in Germany last year in October for the Frankfurt uh, Book Fair which is the biggest book fair in the world. And um, my being there made me realize just what, um, like a superpower emerging market, um, not even South Africa, Africa is. Mm -hmm. So I know that it, so it doesn't matter what's going to happen to the world, you know, in terms of market and global, you know, um, trends, we, we are emerging, we can only grow. So I think that kind of gives me the audacity and strength to make future plans for this company. Mm -hmm. and in the little video I sent you in the morning to promote the inter this interview, I said Bluebird is celebrating uh, five years. Yeah. Is there a lot to celebrate with the five years you've been uh, behind Blackbird? There, there is. So I'll tell you how, you know, you would know that I was um, incubated by a bigger house uh, when I started in 2015, Jakarta uh, Media, who were my previous employers before the, the JV. And so I went independent um, this year from the 1st of April um, this year. And how I made the decision to go independent was not something... I mean, it was the right, the right step, the, the, the next best step to take. But at the minute when I took the decision, it wasn't because it was. I was pushed. So because I was, I you know, the environment had gotten to a point where we just no longer had the same vision. We no longer had the same ideas about what needed to be executed. And so my constant complaining about it. I think this got everyone on everyone's nerves and they were like, you know, maybe you're, you're ready to go on your own. But I don't know if that was meant to keep me quiet or to actually make me leave. But you also spoke about ideological differences that you had. Yes, because when I say, if I say that um, as a black woman in South Africa, I know what black people want. I know how black people shop and you don't believe me, then we have a problem. Because you, you, you are a South African, you are, because of the work you do, you form part of the elite uh, blacks, right? The people who've always had access to literature, the people who've always loved books, who've always loved reading, right? And you don't wa mind walking into a mall and walking into an exclusive books. My question, going back to my question, is celebration. Because I think we use words loosely. And for people who write books, people who publish books, you spend, to me, it sounds like you spent five years of toiling and making things work most of the time. But of course, there were celebrations of getting a book out. Yeah. But what, all that energy that you went through after 19 books that you published, uh, it, was it worth it? Do you, can you say confidently, Hora, I'm, I'm, cele I'm celebrating five years of yes. the Blackbird success? Yeah, because it's 19 books, but it's 19 debut authors. It's 19 oh. new voices in the world. It's 19 new voices that would never have got in the space. But, but tell me, so books are expensive and people don't read as much. Why are we writing books? It's important. It's necessary. And that is why when you make the, when I make the decision to publish a book, yes, one hopes to make some financial gain from it. But you also have to be in a place where you say, this book is important to me. I realize the importance of this book. And if it only ever sold two copies now in my lifetime, I can be sure that even when I'm dead, it will sell. And, you know, post-apartheid South Africa has been a place where we are almost running out of ironies. <laughs> <laughs> and the case in point here is the Media 24 Books Awards that seemed to be peer review organization for like-minded people, people who look... Let me just say white writers, really. Yes. And you had views about that. I'm sorry I'm jumping from all it's over okay. the place. but just, Yeah, it's okay. It just came to my mind now when you're talking about publishing 19 new authors. But yeah. we still have Media 24 book awards that seem to be only for certain people. Look, Media 24 is 
part of Nasperes. And people seem to forget this. It is part of Nasperes. It is an Afrikaans owned company, right? And publishing in its, in, in its very fun, most fundamental state is a very subjective field, right? I am not going to identify with the story of Marlies van Donder, who grew up in Parkview, uh, going to Parkview High or Parkview Primary. I went to Mashupetladi School. I was having Puza Mandla as part of the, the, the you know... Um, the meal provided. The meal, pro the meal provided. I, I didn't need it, but it was just fun because people were having it. And, you know, you, you don't want to be left out. But we've got very different experiences um, as South Africans. Don't you feel that black people, and I feel that you are also sometimes exaggerating your blackness when you are condemning uh, subtle racism even. Because now you spoke about Puza Mandla, and it's a lived experience for many black people. You come from a very middle class family. I, I do. I do come from a middle class And I'm not, this example is just one of many. Yes, you know, if yes. You know what I mean. yeah. No, it's not for me, it's not exaggerated. What I'm saying is, the minute I say Puza Mandla, when I say publishing is subjective, when I say Puza Mandla, you immediately know what it is. A white person wouldn't. So if you were to write a book and give it to a white publisher, and then you've got Puza Mandla in there, they have absolutely no clue what you're talking about, right? If you say, and then after that, my mother sent me to the shop to buy fish oil, you have lost them. Because what is fish oil, right? You and I know what fish oil is, mm -hmm. right? You and I know that Colgate is every brand of toothpaste. You and I know that Coke is every brand of cool drink. You and I know that Groovy is a can of cool drink. You and I know that Pachisinki is, is, is you know, the, the, the gate. I don't even know what to say. It's a passage. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's those little things about our stories that are unique to us. That if you bring them to a black publisher, the black publisher will immediately know what it is. So to go back to Media 24 is, I mean, their biggest, their, their, their book publisher, NB Publishers. And they're not even NB Publishers. It's NB 8 Hievers. Right there, I think from right there, you must get the clue of who they're publishing for. No, but th that is a terrible misconception, Tavis. I mean, eighth ever, it's an Afrikaans word, and Afrikaans is a language spoken mostly by black people. So, can we not do that? With no, the... no, 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 no. I'm just saying. No, I hear your point, but I... I, I, my generation, right? I'm 36, and a lot of people. You're younger than me. Yes, and a lot of people in my generation didn't have to do Afrikaans at school. I didn't have to do Afrikaans at school. The little Afrikaans I know, I learned from university because I went to ducks, right? So we don't, people, people in my generation do not speak Afrikaans. There's the people above us do, but we don't. So if you are a non-African speaking South African, NB8 by its very name, is very exclusionary. I think, I still think it's perpetuating stereotypes, but that's okay, let's move on. Speaking of exaggerations, um, I read several interviews you did when the Bonang blunder happened. Yeah. And you took full responsibility for it. Um, and you, you explained what had happened. But you also said you felt that you were crucified because you were a woman. And, and this is because uh, I was checking for consistency. It's two and a half interviews that I read, and you were like, you know, mistakes happen in other publishing houses, which I know because friends of mine write books and I read their books and I find spelling errors and I call them and I'll and, tell and you, so forth. I'll tell you, but, you know, that remains a very sore point for me. And unfortunately, I'm still not in a place where I can name names. But in the very month that the Bonang book happened, a, a very popular professor in this country wrote, released a book with fundamental date errors. Fundamental. And for a professor at her level, she received absolutely zero criticism. But because her publisher was white, right? And because there was a radio, a very um, influential um, radio person who sent the publisher a message to say, I've picked up these errors in this book. Please hurry and like manage it quickly before it blows up. Then the next day went on Facebook and went wild on the Bonangwa. But do you really want to compare those? Because 
So I do because because the, the woman errors were quite glaring, Tabi. So, like w- glaring what errors? The ones that it, were penciled. It, it, it just in, it looked like negligence more than the, a, the a, ones that were were circled in red. No, no, I read the book. I had the copy. Okay. And I think we've had this discussion before. And I said to you, it just looked like somebody was just very careless when they were doing this work. The whole project had issues of its own. The project had issues of its own, but I don't think that... I hear the principle that you're complaining about. Yeah. When people are complaining. I still do not think to this day that the backlash was warranted in the way that it was. It was, it was never meant as, as, as a corrective measure. It was punitive. It was crucifying. And I think that that was uncalled for. And it's also because I, I think uh, Bonang as a brand, it was just a brand that had has always been very polarizing at that at that point. I mean, it, it, since then, it's kind of mellowed down. People are like our queen or whatever. But at that point, she had still been quite a polarizing brand because she had slept with someone's boyfriend. So it, it gave people the opportunity to come in because at some point you could realize it was no longer a publishing issue. So it was a layered and complicated. It, it was layered and it was complicated. And there was, and when I talk about the, um, the fact that had I not been a woman, that was in response to the shops pulling, uh, recalling it. Shops don't recall books. Only publishers can. So the fact that everyone else in the world missed that, that that was an abuse of power by a, 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 a chain was not lost on me. And I had... I, okay, yeah, I think I've said enough. Of so and uh, five years later, 19 authors later, the highs and the lows, Bonan was definitely one of... I won't even say lows, but a good lesson for, you, for your publisher. It was the lowest moment of my life. It completely derailed my life. I packed up and left and went to go live with my father for a year. So it's not just, and, and I think that's why I defend it so vehemently that I, it, it was, it was a few tweets from people, a few, to them it was a few laughs here and there, but it completely changed my life. I had to leave, I had to leave Gauteng for a year because I was ready to give up on my career. I well, thank God you didn't actually and you're still here. So if, okay, it's highs and lows, so if that we've dealt with the lows, your high moments? Look, my, my highest moments, I honestly, every time I witness an author who I said yes to go on to take their place in the world, like when they get invited to international book events or when we sign international book rights deals for them, just watching that and knowing that had I not said yes, that this person would not believe in their dreams. And for me, it's the reason I wake up. Well, now I, I it's that I've got stuff to pay. As well. <laughs> <laughs> so I, <laughs> I don't want to be caught unawares on the 25th, yeah, but yeah. you know, the work that I do is rooted mostly in what Toni Morrison did for black writers or yeah. black people of color mm. um, in the US, you know, to lay a foundation, to create a platform for them to to know that their stories are valid. And because of um, our history in South Africa and our socioeconomic um, issues that are ongoing, black writers don't always have the confidence and, or, and not even, let me not say writers, but black talent doesn't always have the confidence and platforms where they can be grown and nurtured. So when we publish books, uh, when I publish an author who's written, say, a novel or a piece of fiction, I'm not saying that this is the best that they can do. Mm. I'm saying that this person needs this platform for them to believe in the best that they can do. You know, somebody, I, I spoke about, I spoke about you to someone and and their subtle criticism was like, you know, we can't all be writers. And for me, how I interpreted that was like, you, you, you are harboring people who aren't really writers. But what, I want to respond to that criticism. But what is your criteria of, of saying yes to somebody who wants to publish a book? You know, the weird thing about that you know, is one. Uh, so the, let me tell you the technical part. 
The technical part is I'll read a synopsis. And if I like the plot, so this is largely for fiction because I, I, I love fiction, um, is I'll read the plot. And if I like it, if the story feels new to me, um, then I'm, 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 um, I, I want to, to read on. So if I go into the first paragraph and your first line grabs me, and the second line, and then the third, and if the first paragraph is a winner, I know that we can work with a person. And, and you know, sometimes it's like, um, I don't know if you've read, if you keep digging, it's a collection okay. of, of, of short stories uh, by Gilezo Mobai. The very first story in that book is set in Sishio. And I come from yeah. Sishio. You know, and then and then it goes on and then it's set in Linyeni. And when have you ever in this country seen Sishiro and Linyeni in a literary um, piece, yeah. you know? And that is what I want to be the gateway for. And and the, the thing is, you can't write nor publish for everyone. It is absolutely impossible. And um, and I mean, your friend's um, criticism. So my friend, valid. it was an interview. <laughs> Oh. It was a, no, it was an interview. We were talking about literature and African literature and so forth. And I spoke and I spoke of you and, and I said this is what you do. And and they really commended your work, but they were like, I'm just so scared. She's trying to save the world. And sometimes you'll just accept even people who are just not going to make her, her, her life easy. You know. And, 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 and I mean that's not even a lie. Sometimes I have accepted people who um, haven't made my life easy and if you go on my website you will see they're no longer there because it's hard enough no. I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm and, and you know the, the nice thing Matuba is five years on I'm no longer the publisher I was in 2015 what's changed I'm a publisher now and I'm a business person like the the fact that the business admin is now solely my responsibility mm. the fact that every gamble now is with my rand and my scent makes a completely different me before we go too far from when you said something about sushiwo and lien and so forth you said i watched your one of the videos online and you said you know my love for writing is rooted in listening to my mother's gossip with her. Family. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yeah, you should show my head. And it was, uh, it made me, it made my heart smile. And I, I'm like, actually, some of us didn't have words to explain where our storytelling comes from. Honestly, my mom, I mean, you know, dearly departed. Yes. Yeah, and so awesome, her, her stories with her friends, but mostly her stories with her family. So when we'd go to my grandmother's house and my mom came from one of the poorest families I've ever known. And so when we were at my grandmother's, we go, the, the kitchen was the bedroom and we were all in there the whole time. And there was just stories going in and out. And, and you know, you grow up and you, you learn to put um, it, what people have always defined in a certain way. And you realize, okay, I, but I've always had this. Yeah. This has always been, mm. or when you grow up and you learn what feminism is, you're like, my gran been doing that. My gran has been that, you know? So it was my, just spending time at my mama's feet um, at gatherings and or when we had visitors or when we went to visit was, was where I think my love for stories grew. Mm. Not necessarily reading, but stories, just the idea of stories that, you know, just sitting there imagining these things that people are talking about. And you're a child, so when they talk about her husband left, you don't even know what it means. <laughs> but you know, it's it's interesting. And you can tell they're, in, they're all intrigued. So yeah, they're also just curious and taking it all in. Yeah. Amazing. Now, let me branch off a bit and talk about Sowetan. You write weekly for, yeah. for Sowetan. I'm disappointed because you're... Your columns are very short. What is your brief there? It's six hundred and fifty words, and it's 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 become harder and harder to write to six fifty words because you're going going and you and you had five hundred words and you realize oh I have to wrap up, and then and I'm I'm always very disappointed in my wrapping up. 
on so Wetten. Yeah, it looked like open ended. Like I'm like, what just happened? Or oh, did my subscription end and the article is not complete? Yeah, okay. yeah. So even even this past week when I was writing um on Bob, I was writing and then I justified the six fifty I went because I couldn't contain it, but also still had more to say. Speaking of Bob, what happened to the biography you were writing for? We we know Bob was a, a man who um did a lot of things and didn't finish most. And so we were it was still a work in progress. I and I've struggled so much to forgive myself with not pressing on harder. You know, because you think you have time. You think you can do it, you know, but you don't. Hmm. That's but I, I hope we can still, you know, find a way to honor him. His story is so important, mm -hmm. you know, the the bits that he's already shared with me um, from, you know, what he's written and from our conversations. Um, it's very important. Is it enough for you to do a tribute, publish a tribute to him? No, no, I, I, I would not be doing him justice. Um, if 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 I wanted to do it for money, I could, but I want to honor I want to honor him mm -hmm. properly, and so it would it no it's not enough. And still, on so it's an, you write a lot of things that make me giggle sometimes, and you write about sex, you write about your your weight, yeah, and like you uh, it's like you're you're giving people your criti your critics. No content because you you open up so much. Even if even when I still had you on my Facebook before you gave up on Facebook, you the way you write about yourself, you, it's like you are denying your critics content because you already accepted a lot of things about you. I have, and I mean, <laughs> life is life, and I mean, you know, like I say, my mom died when I was twelve, so I didn't have the most conventional upbringing. You know, I had a dad who was 36 when he was widowed and literally we all just winged it, right? Like we're just winging life. So because of that, most of my ideas about life are not, um, are not rooted in this is how it should be. And I write, and the, one of the reasons why I still write for the Sowetan actually is because my dad reads it religiously. Um, and so a lot of the times I am talking to him because you know how it is in black families. There's just some topics you're never going to get to have with your parents. So I write for the Sowetan. So my dad knows who I am. 